Peace, the kingdom of God is at hand. This terrible topic is about disrespectful adult children. Parents, you have done all you can to try to get through to your adult children who have shown you nothing but disrespect for years and you are sick of it, sick of them. You should know this is precisely what Satan wants you to be, sick. He wants you to become ill so he can steal your faith, your joy, your health, and ultimately your life. He wants to destroy you, and with the help of those ungrateful infidels, he thinks there's a chance. Satan knows who you are, that you are loved and precious to our Heavenly Father, and he knows that you, being a child of the Almighty, are a loving parent who has endured the wickedness of those adults for far too long. Why? Because you love them. They try to put guilt trips on you to make you feel obliged to their whims. They may carry on about how their childhood was one of lack, though they are fully grown, fed, watered, and reared to date. They will make up lies behind your back and even to your face if it suits their agenda. And all of this nonsense is pure evil. Now society would have you in therapy sessions regress and even indulge these imposters, which are ways of dealing with these ingrates, none of which are biblical. Jesus tells us that our enemies will be of our own household. That's Matthew 10, 36. In fact, he says that he came not to change the laws, but to fulfill them. And he has come with a sword to separate families, Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come but to fulfill. He tells us in Matthew 10, 34 through 36, Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. It should not come as a surprise to you, regardless of how you have raised them, that some of your family members, your adult children, turn on you. Don't be undone by this, rather rejoice, because your reward will be great in heaven. This is a form of persecution. I too know this very well. I have adult children who disrespect me, speak evil lies about me, and since I have surrendered my life to the Lord, it's as if they just come together and just come against me with all of their evil. What does the Lord say? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. This is what you need to do. Just rejoice, knowing that this persecution was written before they were ever formed in your womb. And that is Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So not only does Father, did he know you when you were in the womb, before he ever formed you and put you into the womb, but he knew them as well, those that try to persecute you those children that were in your womb, he formed them also. It was all written from the beginning. So it shouldn't be any wonder to you that some of your children may be loving, loyal, and blessed by God, while others are wicked and evil and have brought you nothing but shame. Just this night, I was repeating the beautiful verse, Those who trust in the Lord shall not be disgraced. Maybe you only have one child, and if this is the case, do not fret. This, too, was written to be for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the author and the finisher of our faith. That is Hebrews 12, 2. 
we just keep ourselves focused on the Lord. There are those of us who are chosen by the Lord, while others are merely called. Not everyone is chosen. You need to realize that. Many are called, but few are chosen. That is Matthew twenty-two fourteen. The children you have born or reared are not yours. They were born for a purpose that only God in his infinite wisdom knows. You need to realize that he is the creator of all things, good and evil. As it is written in Isaiah 45, 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Yes, it would be wonderful if those disrespectful, hateful adults would turn to the Lord and be loving. Of course it would. But remember, only the Father draws nigh those that can follow Christ. For no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. That is from our Lord. It's up to God if he wants those disrespectful, hateful children. You need to accept that. And that is something it's taken me a while. <laughs> but I have embraced that truth. Praise Jesus. For some of you, that may be a harsh reality that you would rather not accept. However, God will allow that which you allow and not allow that which you will not allow. Matthew eighteen eighteen. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in the heavens. Now, if you're going to allow these adult children to mistreat you, to abuse you, to be evil, then the Lord's just going to allow that. And every demon in the heavenlies will oblige. It's up to you. You have authority over these adult children. You need to know who you are. And you need to know how to use your authority. Once they are grown like this. And they are turning on you like vipers. Your days are to serve the Lord with love and life abundant. Not struggling, not quarreling with liars, evildoers, and infidels and ingrates. Jesus says, whoever loves his children more than me is not worthy of me. So get that through your mind, okay? How would you show that you love your children more than the Lord? Well, for one way, by putting up with their evil doing. They're not abiding by God's laws and you're allowing them to mistreat you, then you are loving them more than you love the Lord. Because a good parent does not allow their children to be evil, to disobey God, to turn away from the Lord and kingdom laws. It's entirely up to you, and you need to realize that. They don't realize that you have total authority over them, because it's your God-given right. It's God-given. We have authority through Christ over all the powers of darkness. You need to realize that. What about forgiveness, you wonder? Well, Jesus tells us that when we stand praying to forgive, that our Heavenly Father may also forgive us. You may have adult children who are not repentant. I know mine aren't. But you forgive them anyway. You forgive them in your heart. You forgive them when you're praying. The Lord knows your heart. The Lord knows that you love them and that you forgive them. But that by no means gives you permission to lay down and serve Satan by allowing them to walk all over you. So just because you forgive them does not mean that you condone their evil, wicked behavior. You need to understand that. You don't have to live with them. Forgive them, Father, I forgive them. You know, I was thinking tonight, and I've, I've had in the last few days some really evil encounters with some of my adult children. And I was thinking, our Lord, on the cross, and I was thinking, 
Jesus was hanging there being crucified. He said to the Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But you know what? All these thousands of years later, my children know what they do. They know. Therein is the big difference. You know, Father says, does not the heart perceive? So of course they know, and they know because I have told them. Once you hear the word of God, and you choose to be evil or wicked anyway, well, then you're choosing that. You know, from my other podcasts, when I've spoken and taught about the Lord says that if you're going to willingly choose to sin and choose to be evil, then there's no sacrifice for that. And you'll always get these evil adult children and just the evil people that will chime in with their remarks, you know, about how, oh, well, you're supposed to forgive and turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek means turn away and let God deal with them. They are not going to go unpunished, especially if you know who you are in Christ and what your authority is. And all you need to do is speak. And we'll get to that in a few moments. Yes, you are not supposed to spend your days struggling and feeling sadness and just being bullied by evil infidels, okay, ingrates. It's not God's will for you at all. So you forgive them when you stand praying. But as long as they haven't repented, what does repent means? It means change, literally change. I mean, a snake sheds their skin just to become a bigger snake. Realize that. Don't get fooled. Ask the Lord for discernment, and he will keep you safe from all evil. Psalm thirty-seven twenty-seven. Depart from evil, do good, and dwell forevermore. That is God's will for us, to depart from evil. You know, you might be like me, and this will be another podcast. You know, you might have adult children who are literally stalking you. They no longer live with you, but they stalk you from afar. And that's what Satan did with Jesus, right? When Jesus was out there in the desert and Jesus sent him, it says it, and Satan stood off from afar to wait for a more opportune time. Depart from the evil, okay? We are also taught that those who curse their parents will die the death. Not just die, but die the the death. And we all know what that means, the lake of fire. Exodus twenty one seventeen. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. This is the word of God. And curseth means to disrespect, to dishonor. They're not worthy to inherit the kingdom. And Jesus has told the Pharisees the same thing. So many people think, well, oh, Jesus, you know, he's all lovey-dovey and they can do what they want. And because he died already, hey, just do what you want and sin and treat people however you want to treat them as long as you are happy and you've got a ticket to heaven. And that is simply not true. That's pure evil and pride and ignorance. And pride always comes before the fall. This is why we need to pray for our enemies who are in our household, as the Lord says, for they are on their way to hell, and we need to pray that they come around to the truth, which is Jesus Christ. While there is still grace to be found here on earth, while they are still breathing, so pray for them. I mean, we don't hate them. We love them. We love our enemies. We are to love our enemies and pray for them that they will turn and repent and turn to God. I've gotten to the point where I want these adult children to turn to the Lord. That is what I want. There was a time back early when I was diagnosed with pestilence back in 2016 that I would pray and, and I would hope that they would pray, oh Lord, make the children love me and come around and realize that I love them and this and that. I would pray that they would just be good, loving children to me and surround me, especially during that time when I was going through chemo and I had a craniotomy and I was dealing with all that. I thought this would be a wonderful time for them to surround me with love and just anything. 
And that was not the case. They didn't. I remember once or twice I asked my adult sons who had good jobs, no children, no responsibilities, if they could help me out with $15 so I could pay an Uber. I couldn't drive because I was going through seizures. If they could help me with $15 so I could take an Uber to my chemo. And they both said no. I'm at the point now, all these wonderful years later, thank you Jesus for healing me, that I just pray for these people to turn to the Lord, be saved, okay, be saved by the grace through their own faith. I wish them well. I, I no longer pine for them. I no longer want to live with them. I no longer. You reach a point after so much time has passed. The Lord shows us, especially when we're going through tribulations, such as they tell you you have six months to live and you're thrown in the furnace. He shows us who's there for us and who's not. And he gives us dreams sometimes. That's another podcast I want, I'm really eager to talk to you about and help you to understand. He shows us who's there for us and who's not. So there's no greater time in your life than when everybody's telling you that you're dying and you're on your way out and you've been diagnosed with a stage four pestilence, which we who are chosen know that that's a demonic force coming against you. There's no greater time to know who's there for you, who really loves you, and who doesn't. Sadly to say, none of my older children were there and don't. And to this day, now that I'm living for Jesus Christ and testifying and trying to help others, they are coming out of the woodwork and attacking me left and right. And I know I'm not the only one. There's so many of you wonderful siblings out there in Christ that need to stop giving in to these adult children who will just run you ragged with stress and you're not supposed to endure that. That is not the will of the Father. Know that. You've done your part in parenting, whether it's the best you could or not. You must not give in to the spirit of condemnation, which is all too often what these adults try to use when they're attacking you. They'll tell you they love you, but none of their actions display such. It's as the Lord says, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Do not allow them to lay guilt trips on you. Do not become docile. Do not take it, all right? Because that would be indirectly supporting their evil behavior. And we cannot endorse this rubbish. You are a son or a daughter of God. And as a parent, regardless of anything they try to put on you, you are a new creature born from above, redeemed by our Lord Jesus Christ. And you have been born again. And if they are not followers of God, then they are not of you. Realize this. You need to recognize and know God's kingdom laws. Do they honor you? As in Proverbs 23, 22. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee. And despise not thy mother when she is old. Do they honor you? Ask yourself that. Are they honoring you? Are they respecting you? Do they respect your teachings? It says in Proverbs 1, 8 through 9, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Do they respect the things that you've taught them? Do they? Ask yourself that. Do they speak ill of you? Do they disrespect you? You know, Leviticus 19.3, Ye shall fear every man his mother and father and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. God tells them. So are they speaking ill of you and disrespecting you? Are they showing no reverence to you? God says they should fear, which means respect you, 
your father and mother, are they doing that? Well, you should know the Bible says that those that lie against you hate you. Hate, all right? Proverbs 26, 28, a lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. If they're telling lies on you, then they hate you. Don't be surprised. Oh my gosh, how can they hate me? I, I did this for them. I did that for them. You know, I love them. No, they hate you. If they're lying about you, they're trying to assassinate your character. The Bible says that one that tells lies is as one that's murdering. A lying tongue hateth those are afflicted by it. That's one thing you need to realize straight away. The Bible also says a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Okay, now that is huge. Now, I have even told my children this when they've gone on. I didn't even like referring to them as my children because I don't feel that they are. I feel like I'm talking to demons when they're lying. Be careful what you say. God hears and do not bear false witness, and they'll do it anyway. They don't fear the Lord. You need to really, really examine these truths and know them. It's important. Very, very important. You need to let them go and turn away from the wicked. Turn the other cheek. That's what you need to do. Number one, turn the other cheek. Let them go. You've prayed about them. You've put up with this long enough. Number one, let them go. Number two, realize that they who do not observe and keep the commandments of our Father are not of you. You say, well, what do you mean? I had them. They're my child. No, their spirit may not be of you any longer. Do you understand that? 1 John 2, 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that it might be made manifest that they were not of us. Do you understand? I know that's hard for some of you. But the more you keep your focus on Jesus Christ and how much the Lord loves you and you have been redeemed and you don't deserve to be treated. You know, nowhere in the Bible does the Lord say, hey, respect your parents, honor them. But if you think that they were didn't give you enough or they hurt you in some way or said something that made you feel sad, then hey, just never mind my commandment. Cheat them any way you want. No, God doesn't do that. There is no exception to the Lord's rules. Kingdom law is kingdom law. I'm telling you, pray for these adult children. Number three, use your authority in Jesus Christ and speak against the evil forces. Those are demonic spirits that are coming against you. Okay, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. This is our heritage, and it is spoken by God himself. By God himself, do you understand? Even in the New Testament, Jesus Christ has given us the authority over all the powers of darkness. Use your authority and speak out against these demonic forces. Pray for these disrespectful adult children. Turn away, cut yourself off from them. There is a reason God is separating the wheat from the tares even now, even now, if they don't turn back to the Lord, that's on them. Remember what Jesus said, no one can come to me, but the Father draw them. 
So if they're not being drawn, that's the way it was meant to be. Get that, understand that, accept that, and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Love the Lord, okay? You can love these enemies like you love everybody else from afar. You are not to put up with this. Know the truth, Jesus Christ, because that truth sets you free, makes you free. Grab on to that. I love you. Jesus loves you. And God bless you. Until the next podcast.